Alice with another Leadership Journey video segment. Today, I'm particularly excited to introduce our guest we've got in the shop today, Dr. Matthew Chodkowski. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Kit. It's great to be here. Now, we've had Matt on the program a couple other times, and he's always a wealth of insight around this idea of leadership. Over the last few months, I've had various conversations with probably many of you around this idea of leader, leadership. Is it a relationship? Is it a person? What is it? So I thought we definitely should have the authority on the topic speak to us today. So Matt, I've got just a handful of questions for you today and, and help us become clearer about uh, this idea of leadership. Okay. You ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. So the first question is has to do basically with the fact that you've been in this arena for 30 plus years, researching, developing. You've developed a program that Anderson Hauser adopted called LEAD. So my question to you is, Tell us a little bit about your experience over all these years and the claim that leadership is not a person, it's a relationship. Okay, Kit, that's a good place to start. Uh, first, we should start by stating the obvious though. Leadership was never a person. Now, that may be a bit of an overstatement, but not the fact that leadership was never a person, but that it was obvious. And the reason that it was not obvious to most people is because too many people were blinded by the leader centric industrial paradigm of leadership which was legitimized also by historians by authors by academics business leaders and the popular uh, leadership gurus so it might be trite to say but today it is commonplace to hear that leadership is not a person or a process but that leadership is a relationship Oh, that makes sense. Okay. No, that's great. Well, that then leads into my next question that we prepared. So if Matt, if leadership is not a person, can you tell us about what this means for leadership in the 21st century and as we approach the 22nd century? Okay. The concept of leadership as a relationship and a social phenomenon was not simply defined into uh, existence recently. It was always a relationship, always a reality, but it was only realized recently. So we didn't always interpret reality accurately because we didn't see reality as it really is. We don't see things that really exist when we don't believe that they exist. So that was partly uh, the, the reason why this happened with leadership. So in this the 21st century, we can no longer ignore or deny the fact that leadership and leader are not synonymous. This means that leadership is not what a leader does, but what leaders and followers do together as collaborators. And this changes everything in terms of how leadership is studied, how leadership is taught, and how leadership is practiced. Yeah, well that makes a lot of sense. So if that's the case, tell us a little bit about if, in fact, leadership is this relationship, can you tell us more, a little bit more about what that is and what it looks like and what it means? Yeah, I think for this, though, for the definitive description of relationship, we should look to Joe Ross. Ah, one of your favorites. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the post-industrial leadership paradigm, the relationship between leaders and followers is very specific. So it really entails three things. The first is it's got to be based on mutual influence, non-coercive influence. Secondly, it has to do with intending real significant change. And then the third thing is that it's all focused on mutual purposes. And that all happens within a collaborative dynamic. Now to understand this relationship, we also need to dissect the term collaborator or collaboration. So collaboration is performed by collaborators. Who else can do it? This means that both leaders and followers abandon their assigned roles and both become collaborators. Collaborators share a post-industrial paradigm and they also share profound knowledge of principles. Mm -hmm. So the collaborative dynamic really is something like this. The leader becomes a collaborator and the follower becomes a collaborator. Now this is neither a demotion for a leader nor is it a promotion for a follower. They have to look at it as an equal playing field. Leaders become collaborators, followers become collaborators, and then they create the culture where leadership exists 
can emerge and we can see actual expressions of leadership. Mm, okay, makes sense. Well, that seems like that would take some responsibility on both parts, not only for the right. leader to think maybe very differently than maybe they read in some of the books, but also the, the follower to, to, to step up or own a bigger share of the responsibility as well. So it's a mutual influence so, relationship is what I hear you saying. Yeah, okay, exactly. great. All right, you got space for two more questions? Yes. Okay, so the next one, are, next one is, what are some of the, the traps that you've seen over all your years in the industry for leaders and managers uh, in terms of making sure that they see relationship in the form, uh, leadership in the form of a relationship and not a person? Mm -hmm. Well, this might be a very short uh, response, uh, maybe not, not as full as you want, but I mean, in my opinion, we, we used to think that leader style yep. and uh, traits determine how they led or how, how they lead. But I believe that we have a much better understanding of all that now. And even my own research uh, supports the fact that how leaders think and behave are much more dependent upon their paradigm, their mindset, and their worldview than their personality. So the trap, I think, that you're talking about is really, to me, being imprisoned in this industrial paradigm. That's the major trap. Obviously, there are certain uh, individual differences at play here, but the biggest factor in whether one sees leadership either as a position or a relational process is one's leadership paradigm. So I have to stick with that as the major the trap. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And certainly, you're... Uh, your lead program introduces a plethora of opportunities for us to examine where we may be and where traps or myths we may be uh, living in. So, great. Okay, last question for you. So, for a leader wanting to exercise this idea of leadership, can, can you give uh, myself, our listeners, two or three of the most critical things to think about as we grow into this description of leadership? Yeah, well, uh, the research is really pretty clear. To, to change the way you lead, you first have to change the way you think about leadership. In my mind, the first step is to change one's paradigm. The paradigmatic shift is a personal journey that starts on the inside, but the objective is to get to the outside where you see everything with new eyes. So I would say that would be number one. Number two, secondly, one has to understand that leadership and management are fundamentally different phenomena, but they're both critical to the success of any organization or any business. Leadership is not better than management, um, and it neither demeans nor diminishes um, management. No company has the luxury of having its leaders not manage, but no company should tolerate managers who don't lead. Um, thirdly and finally, um, is to avoid the popular leadership press. Um, you know, there are many people that are hooked on uh, what I call the leadership life support system, you know, where they constantly go to the bookstores and buy the new, newest book, you know. They consume popular books on leadership looking for the answer, the silver bullet, you know, looking for a way to become the great leader. And to me, that's all a big fraud. Books on leadership are, for the most part, nothing more than stories about leaders. The only, they only serve to re sustain that leader-centric industrial paradigm. So leadership is a relationship, just like a marriage. And if you think about it, if you wanted to study or understand a marriage, would you only focus on one person in the relationship? You see, it doesn't make sense. So you will not become an enlightened leader who ushers in the post-industrial paradigm based on profound principles by reading popular books that put the person of the leader at the center of the leadership relationship. We can no longer cling to the industrial paradigm of leader in a world moving toward the post-industrial paradigm of leadership. Leadership is not and never was a person. And in the words of Joe Ross again, what is leadership? It's the mutual influence relationship between collaborators who intend real significant change based on their mutual purposes. Wow, awesome, that was a great answer. Loved it, especially love the analogy of the, the, the partner relationship, mar marriage. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, something I 
as easy as it sounds, I hadn't thought about that, but you would never focus on one person in the relationship. That would be, that would be crazy. Yeah. Well, folks, thanks for hanging in there with us. I want to thank Dr. Matthew Chodkowski for being on the show again. We might invite you back again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm Kid Alice, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.